Are you fascinated by history and the darker side of human nature? Do you want to hear about a story that will shock and terrify you? Then sit tight, because we're about to take a deep dive into the horrific story of the first electric chair execution. In this video, we will discuss the events that led to William Kemmler's execution and how it all went wrong, from his difficult childhood to his descent into alcoholism and eventual murder. We'll cover it all. We'll also talk about the development of the electric chair and the controversial decision to use it as a method of execution. So buckle up and get ready for a shocking and gruesome tale that you won't be able to turn away from. In the course of human history, there have been occasions when executions have been carried out incorrectly. During the time of the Tudors, several notable people, such as Thomas Cromwell, who served as Henry VIII's chief advisor, were put to death. The execution of Cromwell was marred by poor performance of the executioner, who failed to cleanly remove Cromwell's head and instead left him to endure the strokes of a ragged and inexperienced axeman. Similarly, Margaret Paul, the Countess of Salisbury, was beheaded in the Tower of London by an incompetent executioner who used 11 separate blows from an axe to bring about her death. Even in more recent times, there have been cases of executions being carried out incorrectly, such as the one involving William Kemmler. Although he was the first person to be put to death in an electric chair, the procedure that carried out his execution was botched. William Francis Kemmler, who was born in Philadelphia in 1860 to parents who were alcoholics and who had emigrated from Germany, had a difficult time in school and dropped out when he was 10 years old without being able to read or write. He started out working in his father's butcher shop until his father was killed in a fight involving alcohol, which was followed by the death of his mother from alcoholism-related issues. As a result, he was raised by his grandparents. Kemmler turned to sell goods door-to-door -door and eventually saved enough money to purchase a horse and cart. But he eventually fell into the same pattern of alcohol abuse as his parents and frequently went on binges with his friends. Kemmler's parents had a history of alcohol abuse. During one of these incidents, he attempted to fulfill a dare from his friends by jumping his horse and cart over a fence that was eight feet high, which resulted in the destruction of his cart and the items it contained. Kemmler, who was commonly known as Philadelphia Billy, was a regular customer at a number of Buffalo area pubs and bars. After committing this crime, William Kemmler was accused of committing an even more serious crime which was the murder of his common-law wife, Matilda Ziegler, by means of a hatchet or an axe. According to accounts that were published in the New York Times, Kemmler was an alcoholic who resided in Buffalo, New York, and worked as a vegetable vendor. On March 29, 1889, while Kemmler was sobering up after a drinkage binge, he became furious with his girlfriend and accused her of stealing from him. Kemmler was still recovering from his drinking binge. The argument got out of hand and Kemmler ended up killing Tilly by repeatedly hitting her with a hatchet that he had taken from a barn. After that, he went to a neighbor and admitted to having committed the murder. Despite the fact that Kemmler's death sentence was challenged on multiple occasions, it was ultimately decided that he would be put to death in the electric chair at Auburn Prison in the state of New York. Alfred Southwick, a dentist, came up with the idea for this device in 1881 and by 1891, after nine years of research and development, it was thought to be ready for use. Despite the fact that there were those who thought the electric chair was an unusual and cruel method of execution, the appeal was ultimately turned down. On August 6, 1890, at 5 in the morning, William Kemmler was awakened in his prison cell by a wake-up call informing him he was about to be executed. After hastily getting dressed, he ate breakfast and then went to see a priest to ask for prayer. He was wearing a suit, a white shirt, and a necktie. After that, the guards at the prison shaved his head in preparation for the execution by electrocution. At 6.38 in the morning, he was led into the execution chamber, where the prison warden introduced him to the 17 witnesses before turning their attention to Kemmler. Kemmler was scheduled to be executed shortly after. When it was Kemmler's turn to speak, he addressed the assembly and said, Gentlemen, I wish you all the best of luck. I have faith that I will arrive safely at my destination, and I am prepared to do so." According to the testimonies of the witnesses, Kemmler maintained his composure and accepted his fate without putting up any resistance. After sitting in the electric chair, the warden gave him instructions to get up for a moment so that he could cut a hole in his clothing to accommodate a second electrical lead. 
After that, he was safely strapped to the chair, with his face covered and a metal restraint on his head. He was then put to death. Kemmler remarked in a collected manner, Take it easy and do it the right way. I'm in no rush at all. After saying his goodbyes to William Kemmler, the executioner then gave the order for the switch to be turned on, which activated the electrical generator that was charged to a voltage of 1,000 volts. Based on the results of the test that was performed the day before, it was hypothesized that this level of voltage would be sufficient to knock Kemmler out and stop his heart. Nevertheless, the execution did not go according to plan. Kemmler was declared dead by a medical professional after the electric current had flowed through him for 17 seconds, but witnesses noticed that he was still breathing during this time. After giving him additional examinations, medical professionals determined that he was, in fact, still alive. It was decided to give a second shock of electricity that would be delivered at a voltage of 2,000 volts, twice as high as the first amount. The witnesses saw something truly horrifying. The blood vessels under Kemmler's skin burst and caused him to bleed. Some people even claimed that his body caught fire as a result. According to a report in the New York Times, the execution room had an awful smell that permeated the entire space. Singeing began to appear in the hair underneath and around the electrode that was placed on his head, as well as in the flesh that was placed beneath and around the electrode that was placed at the base of his spine. As a result of the intolerable odor, a good number of witnesses were required to evacuate the premises. The barbaric execution lasted for eight minutes and took place in an uncomfortable position. After Kemmler passed away, the doctors discovered that his brain had hardened and the blood vessels that were located beneath his skull were carbonized. This execution, which was the first to be carried out using the electric chair, was considered a cruel method of execution, and many people questioned why it was being used instead of more established methods, such as hanging or the medieval axe, which were deemed to be more effective and reliable. In spite of the horrific manner in which he was put to death, William Kemmler's execution is historically significant because it was the first time the electric chair was used. However, it is essential to bear in mind the controversy surrounding the use of this method as a form of capital punishment. The story of the first electric chair execution is certainly a haunting tale that continues to be discussed to this day. It serves as a reminder of the importance of proper procedure and execution when it comes to carrying out punishments. Despite the botched execution of William Kemmler, the electric chair continued to be used as a method of execution in the United States for decades to come. However, the controversy surrounding the use of the electric chair as a method of execution persists to this day, with many questioning its ethics and effectiveness. As we conclude this video, we encourage you to share your thoughts on the topic in the comments below. If you found this video informative, please consider sharing it to others and subscribing to our channel for more thought-provoking content.